సుప్రభాతం సుస్వాగతం ఐ వెల్కమ్ ఆల్ ది న్యూ యోగా థెరపీ పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ ఫర్ జాయిన్ డస్ ఎస్టర్డే ఇన్ అవర్ ఆరోగ్య ధామ్ ఇయర్ ఎవ్రీ మార్నింగ్ వి మీట్ బిట్వీన్ సెవెన్ అండ్ ఎయిట్ ఫర్ వాట్ ఐ కాల్ ద ఫ్రెండ్షిప్ మీట్ మైత్రి మిల వి చాంట్ ఎయిటీన్ వర్సెస్ సెలెక్టెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ భగవద్ గీత ఎట్ యూ నో భగవద్ గీత ఇస్ ద మోస్ట్ కాంప్రహెన్సివ్ టెక్స్ట్ ఆఫ్ యోగా అండ్ వి హ్యావ్ ఫోర్ మెయిన్ స్ట్రీమ్స్ ఆఫ్ యోగా జ్ఞాన యోగ రాజయోగ భక్తి యోగ కర్మయోగ అండ్ ద ఎయిటీన్ వర్సెస్ గివ్ అస్ ది జిస్ ఆఫ్ ఈచ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ యోగా సో టుడే వాట్ విచ్ హ్యాండెడ్ ఈజ్ అబౌట్ ది జ్ఞాన యోగ జ్ఞాన యోగ ఇస్ పాత ఆఫ్ ఇంటలెక్ట్ లైక్ మోడర్న్ సైన్స్ ఇట్ యూజస్ ద పవర్ ఆఫ్ అనాలిసిస్ ద పవర్ ఆఫ్ డిస్క్రిమినేషన్ ద పవర్ ఆఫ్ ఇంటలెక్ట్ టు బ్రింగ్ అబౌట్ ద నెసెసరీ చేంజెస్ to reach the highest goal of human aspiration. What the goal of human life is to reach perfection. It's called as moksha. What is perfection? It is infinite knowledge, infinite bliss, infinite freedom, infinite power. That is the highest aspiration the human beings that I have. overcome all the bondages of the human system what are the bondages we have bondage of the mind since we get up in the morning we go on thinking and thinking and thinking if you tell your mind sit down calm silent it doesn't then bondage of the emotions you are tossed up and down your emotional upsets you are very much excited you are so depressed anger greed jealousy hatred infatuation arrogance all haunt us and they stay with us that the root cause for all these modern ailments that is asthma diabetes hypertension heart problem epilepsy migraine irritable bowel syndrome cancer neurodegenerative schizophrenia root cause for all this is this dimension of the rajas called that the bondage of the emotions then what the bondage of the intellect agnana wrong knowledge limited knowledge and the perverted knowledge all these things are the bondages of the intellect and what is the bondage of this body you have to keep the body going by taking food by drinking fluids and we are bound by the gravitational law and we are bound by the size of our body little bit can it can little bit decrease and can you overcome all these bondages yes says the yoga and you want the bondage of the body yes you can make the body very very small or you can make the body like a huge mountain Is it ever possible? Modern science, no. Impossible, it says. <coughs> But Yoga says, yes. Do we have examples? We chanted the Hanuman Chalisa. Hanuman is the one he had. <coughs> As you go to the highest stages of the Nana Yoga, there you got all these powers, or they are called the Siddhis, that you have overcome all these bondages, bondages of the human body. and there are great masters who stay without taking food for years and years together is it ever possible no the sort of possible according to yoga when you go to the highest stages that the highest stages of gnana yoga so ultimate goal is moksha that is freedom freedom from all of our diseases tensions stresses and dukha have infinite bliss infinite knowledge and therefore gnana yoga gives you that wonderful knowledge the right knowledge to do that so how do we begin how to start now yoga so it starts as shravana shravana means hearing that you hear a lecture or you read a book or you watch a video or you google you know, and you get some knowledge and what is knowledge we get in gnana yoga that you are not just this body the body that we have is only a small portion of your total set of bodies this body is called the annamaya kosha then we have pranamaya manomaya vignana anandamaya koshas you know four more bodies we have then naturally you will get a doubt how is it possible or possible i don't see any of these things i see only the physical body how i can have other bodies not possible not possible so i start question it's called the manana you know questioning 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 and the teacher will answer a few questions but you are not satisfied no. okay you are telling everything but then you have to do the experimentation 
That is called the Nididhyasa. Just an important sign. To conduct the experiment, to examine the truth of the hypothesis. In the modern research, we have hypothesis, and then we have the design of the experiment and observation, measure the parameters, and see that whether it's true or not, and repeat the experiment, multi-center trials, all that you have to do to prove a particular thing. It's a modern research that we do. Similar thing here also. You have to do the experiment. with the asana. Once, twice, thrice. And when you do this experiment again and again and again and again, if you get the same result, then you get the jnana, the right knowledge. So once you get the right knowledge, then you are ennobled, you are purified, and you overcome the results of the wrong actions that you have. What is the result of the wrong action? For what did knowledge? You suffer from various diseases, asthma, diabetes, hypertension, all these things. You know? So once you get the right knowledge, then you overcome that. Is it ever possible? We had one lady who was suffering from bronchial asthma from the age of 22. She was 48 years old. 26 years of bronchial asthma. She had grown so aggravated that she was continuously taking inhalers, cortisone inhalers. And in spite of that, she was getting asthma attacks, asthma attacks. All the best of the respiratory experts had given no other charge she had to do this thing. He went on doing this. But one day, she went on thinking, and she kept over Dr. Nagaratna, for medical director. You know? And she came and consulted her and told, Doctor, Doctor, somehow I think this asthma is psychological. What do you think? The Nagaratna said, why do you think it is psychological? Actually, in asthma, the bronchus gets constricted and they have a resistance to the flow of air, bronchoconstriction, they will do airway obstruction. That's what is called the airway obstructive disease. It is called. So why do you think it is psychological? <coughs> Doctor, I don't understand these things, but somehow I feel that. Why? Because I have been observing myself for the last three months. Yeah, what did you observe? See, when I start getting this asthma attack, Invariably, I am in my house with my husband. You know? Therefore, now I have found a trick. As soon as I start getting this bronco attack, I simply come out of the house. I go to my father's house. Where? Jayanaga third block, Jayanaga sixth block. Only three kilometers away. Then I become all right. So don't you think that asthma is psychological? Oh, you have a lot of problem with your husband. Yes, yes, yes. Whatever I say, he doesn't agree. Whatever he says, I don't agree. Always we quarrel, cats and dogs. Oh, this is a problem. Okay. This is the root cause. You are right. Therefore, you want to overcome all these things? Yes, certainly. Please come to our asthma camp. We had a nice camp for 15 days, bronchial asthma every day, evening from 5 o'clock up to 7.30. One hour lecture, one hour practice, and half an hour interaction, ocean dancers. And we had nearly 70 people in that camp. She joined that camp in Bangalore. And it's called in the Shardasthi Samaya. And we always go and give the lectures. And she started improving. First day, second day, third day, she started improving day by day, day by day. Her inhalers started reducing. And within one week, she almost stopped her inheritors. No attack. No. Last day, 14, the Varadakri, her husband came and told, <coughs> Dr. Doctor, Nagaratna, what a miracle you have done. No. 26 years of asthma has gone in just 14 days. What a wonder you have done. What magic you did. What did you do? Then she asked, okay, ask your wife. She will tell you. Then he looked at her. She said, what is it you learn? One lecture about Prana Yoga by Dr. Nagaratna. Hmm? What is the lecture? Dr. Nagaratna told, See, all of you believe that your asthma is due to the pollution of Bangalore and because of what is called the Parthenium weeds in this rainy season. So all this dust and everything goes there and you get asthma. How many of you think like this? Everybody raise their hands. Wrong. 
If it were true, then how many people in Bangalore suffer from bronchial asthma? It is only 4 percent, 4.5 percent. Why the remaining 95.5 percent of the people in Bangalore do not suffer from bronchial asthma? If pollution, if parthenium weeds are the root cause for asthma, everybody should suffer. Why only 4.5 percent? Oh, she was opening her eyes. Then what is the root cause? Dr. Nagaraj said, what does the medical world tell us? The world, the medical world tells us every asthmatic has an internal defect. What is the internal defect they have? It's called as non-specific bronchial hyperreactivity, NSPHR, in technical terms. What does it mean? Your bronchus has become oversensitive. Small little dust, your bronchus will conceive like this. Some people are like this, no? very sensitive. Small things here and there, they get totally upset. They get depressed, they get anxious, they get excited. Very, 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 the bite. Similarly, your bronchus has become very, very hypersensitive, oversensitive, ati sukshmata. So what the solution? Not by removing the dust outside, not by removing the pollution outside, not by removing the parthenium weeds outside. You do that for a different thing. Swachya Bharat, we want to do that, but that will not solve your problem. What can solve that problem? You have to change. Your bronchus oversensitivity have to change. Your nature that you have oversensitivity should change. So she said, this is what I understood. All the time, you see, I thought that you are wrong and I am right. No. Once I had this lecture, I started thinking, maybe I am wrong, maybe you are right. I always used to quarrel my husband, why? I thought that I am right, you are wrong. I thought you are wrong. Therefore, I used to fight with you. But now, once I know this knowledge, the new knowledge of the Gnana Yoga, I started introspecting myself. Whether I am wrong, why do you think that always my husband is wrong? Then when I started thinking, I started opening my eyes and I became more objective. And many things, what happens to do a particular job, you may do this way, I may do this way. But why do you think that this alone is right, this is wrong? Once I started looking to myself, it's called antaram khatva, introspection. No? Then I found many times, you know, you are also right, I am also right. No? So therefore I started accepting you. Then I found many times you are better, your way of doing things are better than mine. Therefore I started developing respect for you. Not only I tolerated, not only I accepted, but I started developing respect for you. Then why should I quarrel? You know? Therefore I stopped quarreling. Then the whole thing started getting normalized. Her you know? husband said, yes doctor, nowadays she doesn't quarrel with me. And many times I provoke her to quarrel, but she doesn't quarrel with me. Now I understood why she doesn't quarrel. Your one lecture of Gnana Yoga, the right knowledge, the wrong knowledge she had has completely removed, and the right knowledge came, and things started happening. And she started well, and then they came for her YAC in Bangalore, and her husband said, I also should think, I always thought that I am right and she is wrong. I was quarreling, now I also should change. So what Tom Vivekananda says, you have to change. If you want the world should change, if you want India to be great, what is to be done? You, each one of us should change, be and make. But what we want, the world should change, everybody should nice for me, and everybody should help me, to help me, but I don't want to change. Wrong, big wrong. So yoga tells you have to change. So when you have come here, every one of us should have a zeal to change, change, change. Change for the better. From our normal level, you are going to be, become a great human being, super, divine human being, you should be. You are suffering from different ailments. If you don't want to change, nobody can help you. So the first condition of yoga, the Gnana Yoga says you have to change. And very difficult to change. But you put all your knowledge to change. Like that lady who started changing. He said, yes, I have to change. Because unless I change, I can't overcome my asthma. Life will become so miserable. 
I'm suffering, suffering, suffering. Therefore she started changing. But should you become sick to change? Yoga says prevent diseases. So start changing right now by doing the changing process. And what is the change that you have to do? You have to become a great human being. Overcome all these limitations, anger, greed, jealousy, hatred, infatuation, arrogance. And start bringing love, affection, giving, sharing, magnanimity, calming down of the mind, silencing of the mind, everything you start developing. This is what yoga tells you. The Prana Yoga says, develop this jnana to see that we change. And both of them started coming to our YIC and it was a three months program, every day two and a half hours we used to have and both of them become so good. They become a wonderful couple. They are absolutely tough. And then they took the yoga therapy instructor course and that was for one and a half years and they learned all the techniques and they become wonderful therapy teachers. And she was able to help hundreds and hundreds of people in Bangalore who were suffering from bronchial asthma. Because anybody used to come, she would say, I have the experience, I had 26 years of asthma. It all vanished in 20 days. No? What is your big problem? Come on, let's start doing that. Understand. So this is the power of knowledge. No? So we have to bring the right knowledge. That is what Nana Yoga does. If you bring the right knowledge, your suffering will go, dukkha will go, bondage will go, slavery will go, and we start taking the highest heights. So the first and the foremost condition is to change, change, change. You use all your buddhi, use all your intellect, use all your willpower, use all the breathing practices and all other things to change yourself. So you have to overcome your strong likes and dislikes, you have to overcome your karma, krodha, roha, moha, mada, matsarya. These things have to overcome and develop the positive virtues of helping others, sharing with others, and calming up the mind, magnanimity, forgiveness, all good things are developing. Then you start becoming a great human being. This is what Yoga said. So that is the jnana that we get by the right understanding, by the experimentation. So let us contemplate on these thoughts. Sit straight with eyes closed. Relax all parts of the body from toes to head. Take a deep breath and slowly breathe out. Beautiful smile on the face. You have to keep the smile on the face throughout the day. No tension, no stress. Because Nana Yoga says, we are Ananda Mai Kosha. We are basically made out of ananda. To be happy all the time is our birthright. Therefore, we should be able to maintain the smile on the face and be happy throughout. How nice it will be. Everybody start becoming happy, smiling and spreading the fragrance of love and bliss to everyone. The whole society will be so full of charm, bliss, happiness. That's what yoga wants. Right knowledge will help us to read this side. So look at the thoughts. Slow down the thoughts by slow breathing. As the thoughts in the mind slow down, Observe, a thought comes and vanishes. The second thought comes, vanishes. Very short time, a millisecond maybe. But what happens in between the two thoughts? The mind has become silent. Thought, silence. Thought, silence. Thought, silence. Just like waves in a ocean. Go a little deeper. Understand that silence is all the time there. In that vast 
ocean of silence, in the space of silence, the thoughts come and go. Just like clouds in the sky, the thoughts are like clouds in the sky of mind. Chitta vrittis, chitta akashe, chitta vrittihi. Thoughts of the mind in the sky of mind. Chitta akasha. And the Gnana Yoga tells that silence is happiness. Silence is ananda. So ananda is bliss. Bliss is happiness. Happiness is a state of mind. It is not an object outside. It's an inner state, in a state of wonderful calmness, peace. That's why yoga is to calm down the mind. Mana prashamana upayaha yoga. So stay in that calmness and peace. Wonderful, blissful state. <coughs> Make a resolve. Take a sankalpa. Throughout the day I'll be very, very happy. Full of bliss. And spread that bliss to everyone. Spread that happiness to everyone in front of me, whom we meet. <coughs> the fragrance of bliss should be spread everywhere. That is the life, supreme. Come to Namaskar Mudra. Oh.